Hello everybody, this is Focus Motion. So to do a video for uh, 2 cent, 4 cent, 6 max, no limit. This will be a short video uh, with only being for 10 minutes long. Doing it for a um, kind of a strategy session for one of my good online poker poker pro and training, uh, Mikey Riley. Plays on H.com. Uh, so, Mikey, if you're watching this, uh, please take notes and uh, teach you how to crush two cent, four cent, no limit. I've been playing at the table for about maybe ten minutes, and uh, what we've seen so far is um, pretty weak passive play, uh, but it's pretty common in the micro stakes. It looks like right now um, the chip leader is the rest game, and uh, the note on him is he min raises on flop, he see best the top pair, a decent kicker. Um, so I have pocket sevens here, I'm going to go ahead and, and especially when you have an open limpo, you don't, you don't want a 3 exit, you want a leaf 4 exit. I'm a 4 exit here, definitely want to fold out the button. Um, So he tilting and he's multi tabling. That's something to take note of. Um, so definitely C bet here. It's nice board to C bet. I'm a C bet 50 cents. Uh, this guy any two will do. He's playing any two will do. So uh, the very fact that he's not raising, it mean, probably means he doesn't have. A diamond draw. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna bet at least half. See what he does. Um, I like to mix it up a bit and uh, kind of throw people off. And so he, he's calling. So I really put him on a diamond draw. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm bet two third pot. And he folds. Yeah. So uh, it, it goes to show the whole thing behind that. Uh, on that line, I'm gonna fold out Queen Eight off. I'm gonna show the history real quick so we can kind of review it together. On the flop, I bet two, about close to two thirds pot, and then on the turn, I bet a half. And the reason why I bet half was I wanted to see if he had some sort of like jack or queen or whatever. If he did, he would actually raise me. And since he didn't raise me, it led me to believe pretty con con conclusively that he had a diamond draw. And so since the diamond did not hit on the t river, it was easy for me to do a two-thirds bet and take down the pot. Um, but although I'm pretty sure my seven would have been good too. Um, highly unlucky had an eight. So, um, or a jack, and obviously a queen. So in that sense, everything's going according to plan. Uh, math buying at this table is four dollars. I'm currently up about close to nine dollars. Um, I did take about a couple of dollars hit, two or three dollar hit on a, a flop two pair against my eighth with good kicker. Um, but that can't be helped. Um, over here short stack, keep this guy PN2 the win 99, been short stack for a long time. And uh, he's doing what any short stack we should do is push a fold. Unfortunately, gets sucked out. But again, if you're short stacking, um, you're giving your opponents the right odds uh, to call. Uh, they're not going to be afraid that you might bet more because you only have X amount. So it's not like they, they're they going to worry about calling your bet and worry about the uh, turn and river bet. Uh, they know once they call your bet on the flop, um, that's pretty much that's all they have to worry about. So they're relatively easy for them to call your small all-in bet if they have a decent pair or even a draw on the flop. So not to worry on that. And the idea behind short stack play is that they know that you're pushing and folding. And so usually when you're pushing, you have a semi-strong hand. Or you should have a strong hand. Uh, the caveat to that is that they can it's a pretty predictable play and. Uh, Easy to um, easy to uh, manipulate. Uh, such a way you could do that if you're in the position right here and this guy's a short stack. Um, uh, 
you can on the flop if he flops so hard, he checks, you check, and on the turn he thinks that since you check the flop, he can shove his stack and take it down. In reality, you might have flopped a good part of the flop, and so you're checking to induce him to shove. Which is very easy to do for a short stack because they're looking to accumulate chips until they, they feel that they can take advantage of weakness uh, by shoving their stack. I think that's maybe the case, but if you're observant and know how to uh, induce your opponents to do certain things, you can definitely make a profit against short stacks. Alright, looks like we have a new player, M. Palmer, who waits for the big blind. And generally speaking, when people wait for the big blind, that does not necessarily mean they're a pro. It's just that they're waiting for the big blind. <laughs> Uh, it looks like uh, Gogo raised it to 14 cents, which is about 4.5x or 4x, a little bit, no, I'm sorry, 3.5x. Um, the raise, or the min bet, so I'm just gonna, gonna hold here my A6, uh, even though I have position and if connectors, I'll be a gap, it's not that strong holding. Um, uh, in that situation, if I really felt like he, he Raising with air, I'd re raise. And even if you call, I'd be looking to take away on the, the flop if he checks to me. But, um, not really looking to play a pot with that hand. And neither should you be doing that at any rate. 8-6 um, is good with multi way pot, meaning like t three or more players in the pot. Uh, that's when your odds to draw or to flop it straight or, or whatnot. It's good. But it's important to note that he raised 3x with h10 suited. And uh, I believe he checked the flop too. So let's double check that real quick and take a note on that as well. So let's take a look here. So on the flop, he. Yeah, he checks and then he bets his 10. Interesting. Okay, so let's go ahead. And he bets small too, it looks like. Uh, that's half pot, I think. So. On the flop, so P raises to 3.5x um, with ace 10 seated, checks a jack jack 6 forward flop, and bets turn when 10 shows up. How far bet? Alright, so good note to have. You feel for it. So, uh, it's great. So now I know whenever he raises and I can just flat him, if he checks to me, I can take it away from him by butting it into that board without worrying what he might have. Because uh, he pretty much has a face up. Um, and of course, it's good to, let's say, he raises again on Martin Lamb, just observe what he's doing. And that way you can kind of nail his tendencies uh, further. Um, and again, of course, as you have seen me doing during the video, uh, during a session, you take notes. Um, it's important you take notes because sometimes uh, it, sometimes you don't know what to do in a certain, certain situation. Maybe looking at your notes might give you an uh, inkling of whether to raise, to fold, to call, or whatnot. And I feel like over here, this guy here, he'd be like to check ready for strong holdings in our position on the flop. So. So that tells me if I'm raising he calls me and I'm in a half position, if I don't really hit the board, if I'll be less likely to continuation bet on the flop because he might check raise me. And uh, nobody likes to get check raised. It, it sucks. Um, so it looks like we're almost up. It looks like uh, we're about, about a half a minute left. So hopefully whatever you've seen in the videos so far has some sort of value. Um, again, this is my first video uh, for one of my students, Mikey Riley. Uh, so, uh, if you have any questions or any requests, um, please feel free to email me at focusmotion at gmail.com. And uh, so, as uh, we conclude with Focus Motion, and I'll see you soon.